Garlic and honey are antibacterial, so don't they kill the probiotics in fermented foods? I've got the answer for you. True, both garlic and honey are scientifically proven to have antibacterial properties. However, no antibacterial can kill all bacteria. For example, penicillin. Penicillin is technically antibacterial, but it doesn't kill all types of bacteria. That's why there's so many prescription antibiotics beyond penicillin, because each one is only effective against certain pathogens. Same with natural remedies. There is no end-all be-all for everything. When we look at the antibacterial properties of garlic, it too does not kill or inhibit every bacteria species on the planet, only strains that are susceptible to its properties. When fresh garlic is broken open, an enzymatic process is stimulated that results in a compound called allicin. Allicin is the primary antibacterial agent in garlic and quickly changes into a series of other sulfur-containing compounds. But to the point that I've been making, those compounds are not deadly to all bacteria. Most beneficial bacteria, aka probiotics, have a degree of varying resistance to the allicin produced by the garlic. It's important to also keep in mind that several factors affect the garlic's interaction with microorganisms. Here are some examples. One, how was the garlic prepared? Sliced, crushed, juiced, raw, dehydrated? Two, how and where was the garlic grown? In healthy or depleted soil? What region, climate, what variety of garlic is it? Three, what dosage came in contact with the bacteria? A liter of pure fresh garlic juice will have a much greater impact than a few fresh slices. In regards to fermentation, adding garlic to the mix is not a concentration strong enough to deter the beneficial bacteria that are required for the fermentation to be successful. This even includes kimchi, which is one of the heaviest users of garlic in all fermented foods. If garlic inhibited fermentation, then kimchi would not have existed for the past 2000 years. Additionally, fructans in garlic serve as a prebiotic. A prebiotic is food for the beneficial bacteria, feeding them rather than killing them. And you don't have to worry about adding prebiotics to your vegetable fermentation because the food, the vegetables, already have those prebiotics built in. That's the genius of Mother Nature. She knew what she was doing. Another study from 2019 found that a garlic concentration of 4% actually enhanced the growth of the probiotic acidophilus because of its high content of prebiotic compounds. Aside from both the antibacterial and probacterial properties of garlic, here is some more good news. The fermentation process makes the minerals and the nutrients more bioactive in the food. Bioactive components in food help your body function and promote better health. Compared to regular garlic, fermented garlic exhibits enhanced bioactivity of riboflavin, certain vitamins, polyphenols, and amino acids. In fact, all lacto-fermented foods, when fermented properly, share this increased bioactivity of nutrients all thanks to those microscopic beneficial bacteria known as probiotics. I'm going to explain the special properties of honey and fermentation in just a moment. But first, if you want to learn more about the probiotic profiles of fruits and vegetables, and also understand the different stages of fermentation, including which stage produces the most bioactive nutrients, Watch my videos on the 12 essential probiotics and sauerkraut for those profiles and the three crucial stages of fermentation. Links are provided in the description. Okay, let's quickly cover honey. Again, the antibacterial properties of honey are not inclusive to all bacteria, only select strains. Additionally, the natural sugars in the honey provide food for the microbes, just like garlic does. However, different from garlic, honey can actually supercharge a fermentation, especially wild fermentations. In my personal fermentation experience and observation, I noticed that some of the best wild vinegars I made were a result of honey being used instead of regular table sugar. With lacto-fermentation, I noticed that if a little honey was added to the vegetable mixture I was fermenting, it would expedite the fermentation process, sometimes even too much. 
My fermented Asian slaw video recipe is a perfect example of how honey expediates the fermentation process and additionally expediating the lifespan as well. This is because there is so much fuel for the microbes in the honey that the fermentation is ready to eat, taste-wise at least, within 48 hours and then needs to be eaten quickly before it over ferments, which doesn't mean spoiling. It means the microbes have released so much acid into the food due to being supercharged that the food becomes too sour for pleasurable eating. That is why this fermented Asian slaw is a short-term fermentation, lasting only a matter of days instead of months like with traditional vegetable fermentations like sauerkraut and kimchi. Therefore, as a typical rule, I do not advise adding honey to vegetable fermentations. Now, I don't want to get too far off topic here, but I know many of you will ask or be left wondering, so I'll address it quickly. I mentioned using honey with vinegar making earlier, but vinegar fermentation is a different type of fermentation. It utilizes completely different microbes and is a different process than vegetable fermentation. So honey used in vinegar making is great, go for it. Just don't use honey with standard vegetable fermentations since you want vegetable fermentations to last months, even years, rather than a week like with this recipe. However, this fermented Asian slaw will knock your socks off with yumminess. So you may want to give it a try at least once. Think of it as a learning experience with a delicious bite. Okay, let's get back on track. So why does honey do this? Well, one, because it's high sugar value feeds the probiotics. And secondly, because I'm using wild microbes from plants to do wild fermentation. What do bees pollinate? Plants. What do bees share a microbiome with? Plants. What does honey encourage the growth of? microorganisms associated with plants. So while a high quality raw honey and concentrated garlic might stop certain bacteria from thriving, these substances are not gonna kill or have antimicrobial effects against wild bacteria and yeasts associated with the wild fermentation of fruits and vegetables. Therefore, wild fermentations of kimchi, sauerkraut, vinegars, plant-based fermented beverages, and so on, will not be hindered, but rather enhanced. When it comes to yogurt and kefir making, some yogurt and kefir makers out there advise against using honey under the it's antibacterial premise. But again, I have never had personal experience of a fermentation failing due to using honey for the exact reasons given in this video. To sum up, adding garlic and or honey to foods to be fermented does not negatively impact the beneficial microbes associated with the fermentation. Neither garlic nor honey cause a fermentation to fail. And did you know that not all fermentations are the same? The fermentation process in making vinegar is not remotely the same as the fermentation process of vegetables or kombucha or tempeh, just to name a few. Their processes are different as well as the microorganisms used to produce the fermentation are different. I believe this is important information to understand if you plan on moving forward in fermentation. Watch my video right here that gives a quick rundown of the five types of fermentation to help you build your knowledge bank so that you can be a better and more confident fermenter. My video explaining the difference between a wild fermentation and a cultured one is right here, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.